Hi booktube, Lynette here again and in this video I am going to talk to you about the final six books that I read in the month of May um, and the book that I'm reading at the end of May which is probably going to carry over to June um, because I don't like to leave books half finished although if you saw my Operation Kindle Tidy Up folder on my Kindle you probably wouldn't agree with that. Moving on, the seventh book that I finished in the month of May is Afterburn by Sylvia Day. This is a short story that she wrote back in 2013 and I picked this one up because I think I had about a day, day and a half before Tone Topple round 11 started and I didn't want to pick up a three four hundred page romance novel if I then wouldn't have time to finish it before Tone Topple started. So I decided to go back and find the shortest book on my TBR um, that wasn't part of a series uh, that has been on there for quite a while. It is part of a duology, so um, but it's they're two short stories that make up the duology, so they do make one book. But I only read the first, and that was Afterburn. I gave the story three stars. This is about Jax and Gia. I knew what this story was about because a film, independent film company called Passion Flicks made it into a short film a few years ago um, and they actually made the whole thing into one film, so Afterburn, Aftershock. Uh, but this is the first half. Uh, Jax and Gia had a short fling two years previous to this book and Gia put a lot of time into it. She thought that she and Jax felt the same way, uh, but then Jax just disappeared on her and she thought that maybe he had just used her in the end. Jax is now walking back into her life two years later after she's made a success of her career and he's become involved in a deal she is trying to close and is trying to stop the deal from going through. Uh, various things happen that keep throwing them together and eventually they start to sleep together again and they, um, Jax tries to convince Gia that actually he does have feelings for her and that he's not going to disappear on her again and it was just a great little filler between books. Um, I wouldn't say it wowed me. Uh, Sylvia Day, I've, I've read various books of hers over the years. I've read the whole crossfire series which started out really great and then i didn't really enjoy the ending of um i've read some of her paranormal fantasy romance which i really enjoyed um so she's a bit of a hit or miss author for me um so this book was kind of uh, average uh, but it was a nice little filler in between finishing um the first few books of the month and then moving on to tome topple which was going to take up two weeks of the month and was going to be heavy <clears throat> fantasy novels. So after finishing Afterburn I then moved into Tome Topple and Tome Topple is a readathon run by Sam at Thoughts on Tomes and basically the aim of the readathon is to pick up a book that has more than 500 pages and read it. Uh, you can't pick up any books that you've started, already started, um, if you do pick up a book that you've already started, you can only pick it up if you started it in a previous Tome Topple round. I decided to aim for four books because at this point I was still furloughed from work and I thought I had a good chance of getting through at least two of those four books. Um, I decided to start the week with The Dragon Reborn by Robert Jordan. This is book three of The Wheel of Time and uh, if you want to hear lots about my thoughts on this book, then go check out my Tome Topple vlogs that are already live on the channel. Uh, the Dragon Reborn picks up where the shad uh, where <clears throat> the second book in the series left off, and in this book, uh, Rand has decided to travel across the realm to a city called Tyr because there he needs to claim the sword um, that will then proclaim him Dragon Reborn. He doesn't intend to be proclaimed the Dragon Reborn, he just knows he needs to go there to get this sword. Uh, it's also about Nenev and Egwene and 
Elaine, who also uh, have been tasked by the Amelin seat to root out the Black Aja and find the Black Aja. Uh, there are some of the sisters who they now know are definitely Black Aja who are not um, uh, working for the good of the world. They're actually working for the Dark Lord and they are also in tier so they have to travel there to try and find them and exact their revenge for what happened in book two uh, but also um, to try and stop them from hurting and killing Rand. This is also about Perrin who is travelling across the land and again because he uh, is with Moraine who is trying to get to Rand as well and help Rand um, they are also travelling across the land to Tyr so it's a bit of a travelling book um, there's battles and fights there's an epic battle at the end of the book uh, as it proclaims um, the dragon is reborn in this book and also Rand finds a new group of supporters in this book uh, who will be I think quite influential in coming series coming books in the series thoroughly enjoyed it uh, gave it four stars three and a half to four stars the previous two books were only three star books for me this has picked up my enjoyment of the series a lot more and by the end of it I was really ready to move on to the shadow rising which is book four but I decided that I would actually stick with my tome topple tbr so again really enjoying this series now it's starting to pick up i know there's going to be a few books um in the middle of the series which are going to be a struggle because i had previously read them uh but yes really enjoying it now um really wanting to move book to book but trying to avoid doing that so i don't burn out on it especially when it hits the slog a bit later on the next three books that i read were again all part of the tome topple readathon halfway during the second week um i had a phone call from my employers to ask me to return to work they were taking me off furlough because they had opened up the factory again and they needed me in to do my job so this did affect me completing tome topple i didn't complete all four books but i did complete three and a bit uh so the next two books that i finished i'm 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 going to put up here uh, all three covers in one. I'm going to talk about it all as one rather than individual books. Uh, but those three books were the Tawny Man trilogy, which is made up of Fool's Errand, The Golden Fool and Fool's Fate. This is the third trilogy in Robin Hobb's series based around the realm of the Elderlings. And this is set 15 years after the end of the Farseer trilogy which is the first uh, series in this set. I absolutely loved the Farseer trilogy. I l adored the Live Ship Traders trilogy. Uh, the Tawny Man trilogy is still great, um, not as much. I found that her writing style around the story of Fitz and the Fall is far more ploddy and slow going than the writing that she had for the live ship traders uh in this in the first book in the series falls errand fitz is recalled to his life with the farseers in buck uh, he is uh, of the farseer line however he was born out of wedlock so he although he was born of a prince he is not in line for the throne even though the current queen feels that he should be uh, but they call him back because the prince who is the heir to the throne has been kidnapped. They need to keep it quiet from the nobles on in Buck uh, because otherwise they could get twitchy about it because to be honest about the reason why he's disappeared, they would have to reveal something about the prince which would mean the nobles would turn on him. Uh, so Fitz is recalled and is put to work to find Prince Dutiful and bring him back to Buck. The Fool is there to help 
fits and actually it is fits the full fits and the fool who set out to recall prince dutiful in the process uh, prince dutiful learns that fits is also of the farseer line um and also has a magic that is frowned upon which is the reason why nobles will turn against them he also knows the story he knows that there was um someone from the farseer line who died because of this magic um in which was what one of the uh stories during the first series of books around fits and the fall <clears throat> so by the end of the book uh dutiful has been returned to buck and has arrived just before his betrothed arrives from the out islands and that's how book one finishes book two is then all around uh fits fitting back into royal life um albeit he is not known who he really is he's known as tom badgerlock uh from here on out so that no one becomes suspicious of him and he is then starting to train dutiful in one of the magics because there are two magics in this world one is fully accepted as being part of the farseer line the other isn't uh so the first magic the one that's accepted fits slash tom starts to train prince dutiful in this and also starts to train others in it as well because they realize that they need to band together and create a group that can work with dutiful um using all of these uh using the the, the skill uh during the beginning of this book elianaya who is dutiful's betrothed sets dutiful a task to return to her homeland and retrieve a trophy to set on her mother's half before she will agree to become his wife in anything other than the way of her people so the second half of this book is all around dutiful's training dutiful learning who fits is and also then preparing to set out on this quest to retrieve the trophy again like i say it's a bit ploddy this is very definitely a second book in a series lots happen but not very much happens there's no big events uh <clears throat> to move the story along or head the story towards so it can be a bit slow in the writing like i say golden fall i did still um enjoy it and once i'd actually got to the end of it i was actually ready to finish the series and move on to false fate by the time I started Fool's Fate, unfortunately, I was starting back at work, which reduced down my reading time greatly. So unfortunately, although I managed to get about 200, 250 pages into Fool's Fate, I didn't manage to complete it by the end of Tome Topple because I only had a few hours reading time left. So in Fool's Fate, we then set out on the quest to retrieve the trophy that dutiful has to present to uh, elianaya's mother's house there is also uh something going on more going on with elianaya's family uh so fitz and chade who is his old mentor from when he was a boy uh, are trying to solve and figure out um, also the fitz has betrayed the fool and unfortunately eventually he the fool catches up with them he finds a way to be where he needs to be and like i say this book is all about fool's fate uh they do carry out the quest and there is a big battle and this happens right in the middle of the book um so it does lead up to that quite nicely and you do have this big event happening right in the middle of the book and then you're left wondering where it's going to go next basically it's how fits and the fool move on um the fool is actually a prophet who has seen elements of the future but the prophecies that he's seen only take him up to the actual ending of the quest beyond that he has no sight so he decides that he will not return to buckkeep with 
fits he is going to return to the place of his birth and the school where he learned his prophecies and see where that takes him in future uh and this takes some convincing and fortunately Fitz has an event where he's using some stones to travel between where the fall is and Buckheap and unfortunately he gets waylaid and is lost. Um, he is eventually refound but it's after the fall has moved on. Uh, and the ending of the book is then how Fitz takes up his place as a member of the Farseer line. Although he's still Tom Badgerlock in name, by the end of this, uh, everybody who matters to him knows who he really is and they respect his position and they have allowed him to take up what they feel is his rightful position in the family. So it it is a lovely ending. Uh, there is some lovely reunions at the end of this book. Uh, they don't make it easy for Fitz, which I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, but yes, it does end on a happier note for him than the Farseer trilogy did. Uh, he's got a family, he's got friends, and all is where you would want your life to be if, if that was you. Uh, so I did thoroughly enjoy the entire series. The next set is actually a quadrilogy and that is the Rainwilds Chronicles. I won't be moving on to those straight away. These are ones I'm a little bit afraid of because they were the books I was trying to read while I was in a huge slump back in 2010 and didn't really get very far with. So they are a bit intimidating to me. So I'm not moving on with the overarching series right now. I have left it um, at the ending of the Tawny Man trilogy and I will just see when the mood strikes me to pick those books up. So the final book that I've completed in the month of May, book number 12, is Eidolon by Grace Draven. This is the second book in her Wraith King series and this was the last book of Romanceopoly that I'd set myself to read for May. And the square I had landed on for this was Journey's End and the theme was to read a book where the main character is a magic user. I read the first book in this series quite a few years ago now. I don't know why I've left it so long to read the second book. Um, I didn't really need to reread the first book. I picked it up quite well. This book is about Brishan, who is a member of the Kai race. And they are a race who only, um, they're not vampires, but they are awake at night. The makeup of their bodies is such that they have these bright yellow eyes, which are very sensitive to sunlight. So they are awake and do what they do during the night, hours of night. And it's about his bride, Ildiko, who is human. So obviously she's used to doing things during daylight. Uh, in the first book, it was about their relationship, their marriage, and how they come together. And also, uh, I think she was kidnapped in the first one, and it was about her rescue and about her accepting her future. And so in this book, she is quite firmly um, the princess of Sagara, which is where Brishan lives and operates. And she's accepted by the nobles in Sagara, and she has turned herself around so that she operates during the same hours as the Kai. Right at the beginning of this book, there is a catastrophic event, which means that the majority of the residents of the main city of the Kai are wiped out. And the refugees are left fleeing from, for their lives towards Sagara, where Brishan and Ildiko is. Unfortunately, this has also wiped out the entire royal family, which means that Brishan, uh, to all intents and purposes, is now the ruler of the Kai people. The evil that has been unleashed on the land needs Brishan to use magic to defeat them. Uh, so it's about how he uses this magic. Uh, it's at great danger to himself and to all his people, and also means that Ildiko is again in danger uh, however she's got a lot more sense around her now and people who love her and will protect her 
uh, so it does work slightly differently so um, again it's not so much about their relationship this time it is still romance because obviously there's their relationship there's the there's some misunderstandings there's some things that happen that uh, cause some unhappiness for them before uh, Brishan sets out on his mission to defeat the evil but I only gave this one three stars. I really enjoyed the first one, but I felt this one was more a means to an end to their story, just to, to, to set up, to bring them into power and to give them the means so that they can move forward. Um, because unfortunately, Ildiko and Brisham can't have children. Uh, Kai and humans can't procreate. Uh, so it's how they bring a child into their life and and all that sort of and I just felt that it, it it was just written to bring that in I think probably she could have left the first series as it was uh, first book as it was and not written a second book about them um, but yes so I did enjoy it. it was a great last book to finish um, I don't think I'll be moving on to the third book in the series, even though it follows different characters this time. So that was all the books I've completed. I do have one book on the go that I am reading, and that is The Glass Wall by Madison Adler. Uh, this is a young adult fantasy romance, and it's set in an Earth-like, uh, set on Earth, and uh i think there are aliens um and that involved i'm about 100 pages i'm about a third of the way through it so you'd think i'd be able to tell you a bit more about it um but yes uh not a lot has happened to start with uh we've met the main male character we've met the main female character we've met the male main male character and i've got a very twilight feel about this book um let's put it that way it reads like someone is rewriting twilight but with aliens instead of vampires um that's not to say that i'm not enjoying it i am enjoying it um but again it's a pick up and leave book i don't think it will be a wow book i'm not sure because it's the first book in the series i'm not sure if i'm going to continue the series after i finish this certainly i won't be moving on to the next book in the series because i shall want to get on with my may tbr uh not my may tbr get on with my june tbr rather uh but it's just filling in a gap in time between finishing my actual May TBR and moving into the month of June. Not sure I'll finish it. Today is actually the last day of May. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll finish it today or not, um, or whether it may take me another day or so to finish it after this. Uh, but yes, I'd much rather be reading my June TBR than this one. So that was it. That's the 12 books um, that I have read in the month of May. I don't think I'm going to have such good reading months from now on. I certainly don't think I can manage 10 plus books a month um, as I have done for the last couple of months. I'm back at work now, which means that the only real reading hours I've got are at weekends. Um, I do get a couple of evenings a week to read. But again, um, it's not a lot of reading time. Uh, so yes i'm not going to be moving through books quite as quickly as i have in may and april let me know what you all managed to read in may did you take part in tome topple uh, if you did let me know how you got on down below did you manage to finish a book or did you just manage to read books that had 500 pages or more uh, let me know i hope you like this video if you did please like and subscribe and i will speak to you all again soon bye